and welcome to the world I live in, the Susan K. World, where we believe in transformational growth and development. Remember, you are your own rescue. Parents tend to believe that parenting comes naturally mm -hmm. and therefore they know everything about their children. But what we fail to understand that parenting is not about the child, but it's about you as the parent. Sometimes we think that control and discipline do mean care and that the preparation for the future is more important than the present and, the current, and their current experiences. In today's discussion, I am joined by two mothers, Diana on my right and Barbara. Diana Hi. is a mother of two teenagers, a boy and a girl. And Barbara mm -hmm. is a mother to a teenager, a teenage boy and a young son. Personally, I'm a mother to a teenager, a boy and two girls, one aged eight and another one going on 10. In this generation, one will ask, can we still parent our children the way our grandparents were parented or the way they parented our parents or the way that we have been parenting. The kind of parenting that zeroed on control and discipline. Our parents control or controlled whom we marry, which schools we go to, what courses we take, the friends that we have. Are you new to this channel? Subscribe, hit the notification button that you will know when new videos are uploaded. Join the conversation by leaving a comment below. Follow the conversation on Twitter at Susan K. World and on Facebook at The World I Live. As parents, we have unfulfilled desires and dreams, unfulfilled goals, and we usually project these onto our children, such that we hinder them from becoming the best versions of themselves. Well, now to you, Diana. How can we allow our children to be free from these unmet desires and expectations? Thank you, Susan. Uh, as a parent of teenagers, I have realized that there are things that we do as parents traditionally learn from our grandparents, from our uh, uncles, from our parents, and we want to subject our children of this millennial era to, to live things that do not actually apply to them. For example, I have un I've learned that my children as teenagers need more understanding from me as a parent than what I was, th than the time the way I was brought up. Mm -hmm. When I was growing up, I was brought up under very strict rules. I had uh, things, uh, uh, traditions that were running in the family that I could not deviate from. But currently, with a new era, there's so much that has influenced our children's growing up. Uh, these are children who are exposed to the digital era. <coughs> they have learned things on our social media. They are learning their schooling pattern is totally different from what we used to do at school before. They have been exposed to stand things earlier than we we, we than had we an were. opportunity yes, mm, to, to we do. Were. So mm. when I'm dealing with these teenagers, I have realized that what I used to do at that age is not what can actually be done by them at this age. Mm. They are way far ahead of me. My thinking, my appreciation of things around them, my appre the appreciation of uh, things is totally different from me. The, the way to they life. yes, the approach mm. to life, the way they look at uh, things, the way they want to handle them is totally different from what I was when I was a teenager. Mm. I had a humble background. They too have a humble background, but they had a, they, 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 they feel to be they are like they are entitled certain things, mm. and that's what we have exposed mm. them to. Mm. So mm. if that's what we have taught our children to be, or that's that's what has been brought to them, then. It's only right that we get down to understand them better. Their temperaments are totally different from us at that age. Their uh, 
exposure is totally different from us, so that means their reaction to things is going to be different, their desires is going to be totally different, their, you know, the, 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 their choices are totally different mm -hmm. from what we used to do at that time. So mm -hmm. if I'm going to, to rhyme with my children, if I'm going to be a better parent, then I have to come down and be understanding. I give an example of my son. Uh, okay, maybe for example, my daughter, she, she's a social media person so much. She's a digital person. She loves social media so much. She gets up in the morning and takes her photos. But that is not what was happening before. Does that mean that she's not productive? No. After she's done all those things that make her very happy as a child in this era, she gets back to her housework. She still does uh, the housework. She will do the cooking in the house. She will do the washing of clothes and everything and sit back and do her revision for her studies. But that doesn't mean that she is a spoiled child. Spoiled child. Yes. So we need to come <coughs> down and appreciate that the, 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 what they are going to see or what they're exposed to is actually influencing their behavior. So mm -hmm. we need also to come down, get out of the, yes, we have the control, but come down, break down your, my communication with them so that we can be at par. Or else at one time I'll be able, I may not be able to communicate with them. Mm -hmm. What are some of those unmet desires that we have as parents that actually we tend to project on these children? What are some of those desires, that the unmet desires? Uh, while I was growing up, I definitely thought I would maybe, I dreamt of being a lawyer. I dreamt mm -hmm. of being a doctor. I, I had, okay, yes, there are things I wanted, but I wasn't a good scientist. But I knew that I would still make it to law, you know? and. When my daughter, same thing is happening actually, it has also happened to me of recent. When my child is not hitting the grades well in sciences, I already have it, my option in the head. Mm -hmm. I'm always very comfortable and telling her, Natalia, you know what? We can still go and do law. Actually, still talk about <laughs> it. <laughs> you know, so for me, I am like, that. Mm -hmm. it didn't happen to me, but I think, she actually, I see that she has the brains for law, mm -hmm. which is not fair. Mm -hmm. Because recently she was telling me, Mommy, you know what? I want to do things in IT. Okay. I want mm. to be able, do you know what I want to do? I want to be able to hack into people's systems. <laughs> and for me, I was like, Natalie, is that a job? This generation. Mm. Yes, that's is that a job? Generation. But for her, she is already, because of the kind mm. of movies she watches, mm -hmm. she's already exposed that actually there's an opportunity that if I'm a, not, she says, I'm not, do, I'm not hacking into people's systems for bad, to for steal years, to steal or what. But one, it's for fun. Two, it will be a job. You understand? Yes. Three, there must be somebody who will be needing my skill. Yeah, people and need really, and they'll anyway. be paying mm. very well. Mm. And I am not seeing that because I am traditionally tuned to what Today, I knew, yes, yes what I wanted. Courses, the what the, my unmet desire mm -hmm. of being a professional at certain things, mm -hmm. you understand? Mm -hmm. So ICT, mm -hmm. yes, this is the era we are living in, but that was not in my era mm -hmm. too much. So my desire, I normally sit down and speak to her until recently when I said, wait a moment, why does she say this? Mm -hmm. I had a native friend who came and she said, Paul, I am going to, to learn how to hack into your system and I'm going to let you know. So she keeps that kind of discussion and she mm -hmm. said, no, it's not for bad, but it's something I love doing and I know that it will be paying me in the future She's very letting well. you know you what, know? She what she wants to, to do. See, what to she do. Does. So my unmet desires, I need to come down as a parent in this generation. Mm -hmm. I know that doesn't work for, for, that will not work for the millennials. Mm -hmm. So they are thinking just the way the, their world is moving as fast as their world is running. So we need to appreciate mm -hmm. that and calm down. Some of them sometimes even tell us, I want to be a model. Exactly. I want to be an air hostess. And she's like, what are the qualifications? And sometimes you want to show her that, yes, anybody can be a model. Anybody you need to, but she's like, uh, can I have a shortcut here? Yeah, mm. Because that's what is trending for them. Mm -hmm. And that's what will bring the income. I mm -hmm. want to be a makeup artist. Mm -hmm. And it really, it's making money because how much is it to hire a makeup artist? But these other things that's happening in their in their generation right now for mm -hmm. us they may not be making sense to us so as a parent out there you need to know that these are different times mm -hmm. these are mm -hmm. new times come down and see what can you do to make sure that your child remains relevant in her era mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. That's uh, helpful. yes uh, barbara how what are some of those unmet desires that we usually struggle with mm -hmm. as parents because there are those desires that are actually general Mm. to all of us as parents. So yeah. what are some of these desires that we struggle with that we want to project onto our children and how can we deal with them? Oh, thank you, Susan. Um, Dan, I like what you, 
shared <laughs> some of the things. Well, my unmet desires are really, are really so gully. Mm -hmm. And the fact that I have boys, I'm like, hell no, is this going to happen with any of my sons? Mm -hmm. And then recently, my son is like, he's grown because uh, during the lockdown, not having saloon and all that, so he's grown an afro and his hair is way more than mine. Mm -hmm. So he looks in the mirror and he's like, I'm going to model for sports, I don't, because he's, he's, he's an athlete. He's I'm going to model man. for Nike or Adidas, my hair. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, did you say model? Like, didn't I've always wanted to be a model? Mm -hmm. Didn't I went for Face of Africa and like, well, like, turns I'm like, yeah, good, okay, something is going to happen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> that I haven't lived that my child could live. But at least that's something that yeah. they want, yes, not then, what you're pushing to no, them. It's what I they don't, desire. Yeah. So most, what, what I would urge parents to do is like, do not push your desires onto your children. Mm -hmm. If it comes out of them and it's in line with, with what you've always wanted, mm -hmm then go for it. Push them and tell them, you know what, I also wanted to do this at this point. Mm -hmm. And the reason why I met a roadblock is because of A, B, C, D, Z. Mm -hmm. So if you actually want to do this, this is how you should do it. This is what you should follow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, for instance, he wants to be, he wants to play pro football. So my dad, his grandfather, played football but he played like a corporately kind of you know organizations then at school those days those days uh, so i was like okay you want to do pro football then i'm like but don't you think you should do something like it's mm -hmm. like mama engineering takes a lot of time then it needs a lot of concentration then i'm like you know what take what you feel is within you and then go out and do it because oftentimes what we desire the way i love i love god the creator of everything mm -hmm. so the way he creates us is not necessarily how he's created our children mm -hmm. and sometimes the way he's created our children mm -hmm. will be what mirrors our grandparents or their great-grandparents yes. something they mm -hmm. could have desired mm -hmm. so I feel like we should not put our unmet desires on our children it's really unfair because we had our chance and we didn't live to that mm -hmm. but if God is giving a second chance through your, your children and it's out of their own desire then you yeah, push them and see what what made you fail to achieve that and you think that your child can be able to achieve that and then go for it and then cheer them on but do not force it onto them because you only make them feel i have a cousin who like the dad my, my uncle wanted her to be a scientist she got veterinary medicine on uh, government sponsorship at Makere. she's like daddy i want to be an accountant like no i can't afford uh, to pay for private. So it's like, okay, as soon as she graduated, she got the papers, gave it to her dad. The first job she had, she went and did CPA accounting, and now she's an accountant. After okay. taking three whole year, three, four years, three four years studying, studying medicine. veterinary medicine. medicine. Mm. She's like, I don't want to be a vet. Mm. This is what you want. Mm. Yeah, mm. so we should always be cautious of really, like, are, are we pushing it so much? Is this what I want, or is that what the child wants? Mm -hmm. So that means we have to be aware of what is in what is in them and what they need and what we actually have gone through. So we don't feel like pushing pushing what we want onto them. Do you think that uh, in most cases parents are coming from a place of fear, the fear of the unknown, that yes. we project all these, the fact that I didn't succeed in this, yes. I am so afraid that my child mm -hmm. could fail. And if they failed, what if I died before they get where I want them to get? Mm. How are they going to live in this world? Do you believe that these unmet desires mm -hmm. come from a point of fear and uncertainty on the, on, from coming from the parent? If the unmet desire is the same desire that your child has, then you'll have the fear that your child will not also succeed mm -hmm. in that desire. Mm -hmm that you, you've had. Mm -hmm. But then if the fear is coming from you thinking that probably um, maybe I made the right choice or mm -hmm. maybe I made the wrong choice, then you have to reevaluate. Oftentimes what I think we as human beings should do because they, there are things you want to do and you know, know that someone else has probably also thought of it, maybe mm -hmm. in a different place. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to look for mentor, men, mentors for your children. Mm -hmm. Might be in sports, might be in entertainment, anything mm -hmm. that or motivational speaking that your child wants to be and that you missed at that point in your life to be and you feel like they could probably go through that so they don't fail because mm -hmm. fear there's a saying there's a common phrase that people always use okay it's so worldly it's uh if you ask yourself 
like you want to fly and say what if what if I fall and then someone's like no darling what if you fly what if you fly instead of falling so like fear oftentimes grips most of us from achieving the best that we're supposed to 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 be in our lives the fear of the unknown it it, it hits every it hits everyone but once once you put it out and then dis, 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 discuss it, it's, it's the best thing. And the, the unmet desires, what I've come to realize is, if I miss my chance then, and I'm given another chance, it might not necessarily be through your child. Mm -hmm. It can be through anyone mm -hmm. that then you can then <coughs> mentor mm -hmm. into that, and then they achieve, because it's, it, it gets fulfilling that mm -hmm. you've helped somebody, somebody else. In, this, in, in our Christian lives, especially in the prophetic, once you've gotten a word of you know this is the direction your child is supposed to take. Mm -hmm. Even you yourself, you may not necessarily have a word, but if you pray and seek the Lord earnestly, what is it that you have placed these children in my life for? Mm -hmm. What am I supposed to do with them? Because the Bible says they are a reward from mm -hmm. the Lord. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you present before and like, you know what, this is what I wanted, this is what my child is, this is my unmet design, the Lord is like, Solomon is one that built the temple. David wanted to build it. Mm -hmm. He had that desire, that vision. But no, God let his son mm -hmm. do that instead. So it could happen with us, and it may not. But then if we lay it all down and be like, God, these are the gifts you give. Give me what is the blueprint for their life. Mm -hmm. Help me train them in the way that you expect them to go, to fulfill. In that you become at peace with your unmet desire, and you be like, I feared this would happen, but then my fear was for nothing, because then you have trusted the person who gave them to you. Who gave them to you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Susan, mm -hmm. I beg to differ a bit. Sometimes it's not um, because of uh, we don't do this maybe because of fear or for the uh, you know not so sure you're uncertain about maybe their future. Normally, every parent wants the best for their children, so. Exactly. <coughs> a majority of the parents, whatever that we are trying to do for our children actually, I want all parents to take heart. We are doing it from the angle of love. We're doing it with so much love. These are my best gifts from God. I want the best for, the, for them. So you start imagining what is the best. I hear the doctors are paid well. I think my child should be a doctor. I know the lawyers are work independently. They are not employed by anybody. I, I would love my daughter after all this employment and all what I go through, the, the, the control that I go through, you would wish her to be independent. So you want her maybe to go the, the other way. So every decision that I'm, I trust that most parents make is also from love. So from that angle of love, we end up, you, you're trying to show this child, I. This is what I wish for you. This is, I yes, know, yes. I am so certain. I have mm -hmm. seen, the, like mm -hmm. you talked about engineering and the boy is saying, you know, it takes a lot of my time. I can't concentrate because he has other things now he's dreaming to do. But like a parent, you're like, oh, an engineer? That would be really good. And you have the brains. So you're doing it from... From always, yeah. Of course, it With always love. comes from a point of love. Mm. But sometimes because we have carried these beliefs for so long mm -hmm. and we believe they are the best choices because we, we know that when you are an engineer, you are a lawyer, you are a doctor, you're more respected mm -hmm. or you are seen more as a mm. professional mm. than somebody who is a social media digital content creator. Mm. And yet, actually, they, they too can succeed in that mm. field. Mm -hmm. But as a parent, we already have these patterns, mm -hmm. parenting patterns that are so unhealthy. However, it actually comes from a, a place of love. Your, your intention is not to ruin your child. You actually want them to succeed, but they succeed your way. Because that's what Which you Which sometimes do. isn't fair. Which sometimes isn't fair. And actually, sometimes, some children need to be helped to that level. It's like you have to wake them up and shake them up mm -hmm. and show them the right way. Because at the end of the day, they come to love. Mm. So when a child actually comes to love that, which you pushed them into, mm -hmm. if they genuinely come to love it, then you've still achieved mm. that, yeah. that you actually, God helped you align them into their destiny. It may have been unconventional, mm. but you were able to push them to find their position that they were supposed to trek. However, in most cases, what happens is that when we are projecting all these things, it's when, when, I, when I talk about unmet desires, these ones, 
you want them to fulfill something you never you fulfilled. never achieved it's what's at the back of you and it's totally for the right impossible. you love them Sometimes. you love them but you just feel they should and that reminds me <laughs> my father <laughs> my father was a health uh, he was a health inspector mm. and he so desired that one of his children would join a, a do medicine or something within public the health and public and health mm. something mm. within the medical field such that in times when there seemed like there wouldn't be enough money to take for him it was like somehow he was happy not happy per se but mm. it was like it's an opportunity now to push you mm. into this mm. Mm. go branch off and do a certificate or something because it's cheaper and it's something that i have always desired mm. so he always had that but unfortunately for my dad none of us ever did that why simply because it wasn't what we wanted mm. it wasn't whom i wanted to be so still there are those parents that will push us mm -hmm. or we will push our children into certain directions simply because when my father would be speaking he would say i wish you could do this for mm. me that mm. is what it was i wish you could do this for me so <laughs> it wasn't about <laughs> us mm. as mm -hmm. his children mm. it was more about him his unmet desire mm. such that if any of us ever qualified in that field he would have achieved he would have been happier in that he is he sees himself mm. through his children mm. yes my child so, is a nurse is mm. a doctor is a health practitioner that's something that could have made him happier yeah some How? parents are actually lucky to get that like mm. my dad be, did become accounting i did bpa finance and it's like similar so mm. somehow mm. he never pushed me to do that but somehow i end up because the field at yes. the end of the day the field yeah, is the same it's the same but mm. like mm. and i never ever thought of like finance i'm like me numbers barbara mathematics mm. there's no way i'm going to be able to manage this but then i realized the fear of like i fear failing math math is so hard i can't mm. be able to do this so that cuts you short sometimes mm. your unmet desires why your child might fear doing it they might look at it as so difficult like dad wants me to be a doctor a doctor in this day and age okay i have to study the sciences mm. i have to be good at this but can i be that maybe you've probably just got a b and you're like no i can't i be. can't handle i this. can't handle mm. this but mm. actually sometimes in life you have to put your mind and focus on to that which you want to achieve and when you do focus you're able to get it like the english say practice makes perfect makes so perfect. if you do not mm. practice that which you you want to be good at there's mm. no way you'll be mm. you'll be, be good at succeed. that so mm. and every day you look at the greatest boxer every other day they're training the athlete every other day there you say bolt started when he was uh, eight i think mm -hmm. So all those things, like if you see, like you encourage, you encourage them. Then if they reach a point probably that they feel they, 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 they don't think this is it for them because for some children up to 20, mm -hmm. 19, yeah, they still don't know what they, they want to know. do. Yeah. <coughs> You're they sending still them don't to know. university mm -hmm. and they don't know what yes, course they are They still are going don't to do. know. Mm -hmm. So for some parents, then you can be able to make a, a, a a decision with your mm -hmm. child talk through them like that's why in schools these days they have career guidance uh, counselors like take them through the different careers if you study this this is what you'll work as this is what the field has to offer mm -hmm. but looking at the research and statistics these days this is where the world is headed mm -hmm. i think you'd be because ultimately at the end of the day for most people mm -hmm. it is the money they have to make mm -hmm. for others it's their passion like i love being a chef I love cooking. It doesn't matter how much I'll make out of mm -hmm. cooking, mm -hmm. but I have to do that. It For makes others, me it's happy. speaking, yeah, to people. Mm -hmm. yeah? They'll be like, no, this is what I have to do. This is what makes me happy. Mm -hmm. Even if it doesn't give them that much. Mm -hmm. They're those who have a passion to what they do as ill, that no matter what, money is not an, the pay an, is an yeah. not the issue yeah the pay is not the issue well for for for, for some the pay is the issue because everyone wants a better <coughs> life you want mm. a better house you want a better car you want your child to live a better life than you live so you tell them you know what this is what's on the market this is what the career uh, guidance people mm. this is what the coaches say this is what the mentors say so go ahead and do this because like when I asked my son, okay, I, I love soccer, then I said, okay, apart from loving soccer, it's like, do you see how much those footballers are paid? <laughs> I'm like, okay, so mm. it's the passion mm. and, and the, the money. Yeah, mm. the then I'm like, so the if, then I, I told him, you see, like, you know how you always want to have a fallback. I'm like, okay, if you had an injury, then mm. maybe you're out of the league for a long way to do this. Like, the only other thing I would do apart from pro football is being an architect. 
and he's always been building things from when mm. he's like two mm. and all that there's a game he likes playing minecraft i'm always like screaming stop this game. but when i looked at the game it helps actually with critical thinking mm. designing mm. a city designing a building mm. designing so i'm like there's certain talents that are in our children that mm. we also mm. may have had mm. so in that way our unmet desires somehow but i don't think we should really force it on them mm. 